Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. We have spoken about MVS 3.8, turnkey 4 minus, uh, hundreds of times by now on this channel. And you all know that uh, amazing Jürgen Wintelmann out of uh, Switzerland has put together this distribution because that's really what it is, a distribution. It's not just MVS, there's hundreds of other software packages installed on top uh, available for the last uh, several years and he's gone through several updates. Uh, we are now on update eight, seven, six, five, etc. Uh, and update eight has been around for, I wanna say at this time, maybe five, six, or maybe even seven years. And we have no indication if and when an update nine is coming out. But what I want to say in this video is that this is a ready-made uh, image of MVS 3.8. However, back and it's, as we all know, this uh, MVS 3.8 is now uh, a good 40, 43 years old uh, operating system. Works beautifully. We can do a lot of stuff with it, and we keep adding new and amazing functionalities to it. However, um, uh, back in the days, 43 years ago, uh, even to this day. Um, you wouldn't just take an image from somebody, uh, even as uh, as virtuous and as uh, prominent as Jurgen Winkelmann, and install it on your system because uh, this is a generalized uh, distribution. It fits many needs. Uh, it's not uh, custom made. It's not uh, it's not tailored for the particular needs of anyone. It's just a generalized image. And, and and the most important thing to understand is that back in the days, 43 years ago, you wouldn't get an image from IBM on disks already installed. What you would get are, uh, were tapes. And then you would have to go through the process of using those tapes to do a system generation, as what it's called, and generate your own MVS for your own very particular needs with your own very particular devices and with your own particular growth plan in terms of uh, terminals and disks, etc. Something that would fit exactly your mainframe and your shop and your uh, park of devices and, uh, and peripherals and 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 what you are going to do with your MVS and that process it's called um, is called system generation now uh, system generation is a somewhat complex and and tedious process with many dozens or maybe hundreds of steps um, and there is one person here uh, Jay mostly on this website that you can see here over the last uh, I don't know maybe 10 years or so he has been the gold standard in showing people how to do a full system generation of MBS 3 to date starting from the tapes and getting at the end uh, through this whole process into something uh, that you can that you generated yourself fits your own needs and you can IPL and work with and this process also goes through uh, later on through his website Jay mostly shows how to install all the add-ons that you want to have such as uh, the rev edit editor such as uh, a spool viewing system uh, such as compilers and many many more things that you need to uh, to put on top of mbs 3.8 so that you actually can do something with it and uh, and so jay mosley is the gold standard everybody uh, follows his uh, method to do a system generation i have done it myself uh, a few dozen times by now over the last 10 years or so and it works however it's easy to make mistakes uh, it's also easy to go back when you make a mistake. As long as you always make backups, you can always go back to the previous step and start again from there, but it's tedious. And um, also, this process uh, does not really tell you where to get the latest and greatest uh, versions of all the software and compilers that he refers to. Um, number one. Number two, there's been a whole slew of other packages that have been developed for MVS 3.8 over the last uh, years and it's actually accelerating lately over the last few years, um, such as a Rex uh, editor, um, Rex uh, interpreter, such as uh, additional uh, subsystems, such as a network job entry subsystems, and many more things that have been added over the last uh, three four years. And uh, while this process is uh, absolutely correct and does work, I've seen it myself. Uh, it doesn't refer to how to get the latest. Uh, and greatest software and install it on top. This is going to get you at the end with a plain vanilla MVS 3.8 which work and you can easily uh, go and find the other software and add it on top. However, you would have to do this on your own. Now there is uh, 
on this channel I've spoken uh, already twice over the last six months or so that uh, we have TK4 obviously this is a ready-made uh, distribution with everything installed and we've seen many times how easy it is to get it up and running uh, however as I mentioned it's a bit outdated and then there is a gentleman called Rob Prince um, who has a TK4 Rob distribution of which I spoke about in this channel before um, where he puts all this additional software, did a sysgen, puts all this additional software, ISPF, um, uh, fixes for Algol, fixes for COBOL, everything on top that I just mentioned, and makes it available for you so that you have the latest and greatest software. That's one route to go. The other route to go is uh, something that has come up over the last year or two um, by a person called uh, Soldier of Fortran, I don't know if I can um, uh, mention his name here in this in this video or not, but uh, if you uh, Google Soldier of Fortran, you will find many mainframe contributions. Uh, he's a security analyst speci specifically for the mainframe, and he has done a lot of additional development for the community on top, one of the most enthusiast, uh, enthusiastic developers. And he put together what he calls, uh, together with some others in the community, he, they put together something they call MVS Community Edition. And the good thing what, that they've done is they've, uh, they go through a whole system generation of MVS 3.8, but they do it fully automated. So basically, they take the J Mosley process to generate MVS 3.8, but they script it with uh, Python and Bash and some Rex even, and so that it's completely automated. And at each step, whatever new software needs to be installed, it goes to where the so software is located and gets the latest version of that software and installs it uh, on top of uh, MVS 3.8. So that if you run um, this Docker container here, you will always get the latest and greatest, and it's sysgen, meaning that there is no funny business. It's 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 installed properly, and it works uh, nicely. And I've done it myself, um, and so it's it's really quite something what they, they put together. And uh, every time there's a new release of some software somewhere, they will come out with a new uh, Docker version and a new. Um, uh, a, new, a new container that you can run. Now, some people like to run containers for the mainframe images. I don't. Um, while I work with Docker extensively at work, I don't like to run my mainframe images inside containers because I lose some of the visibility. Yes, you can, of course, log into a container and see what's running, but um, I like to have, instead of running with containers, I just have, I, I run something called screen, um, which uh, or Tmux, which gives me virtual terminals, and then I run everything inside virtual terminals. That's just the way I work. But I also know that some people um, are not familiar with Docker. Some people may not be able to run it because, yes, you can run kind of Docker on Windows or Mac OS, but it's not native there. Uh, you can do it, but it's a bit more convoluted, or people just simply um, do not uh, want to run Docker or they don't have... Um, they don't have no interest in it. And so um, in this video, I show you how to obtain a tar image of this very freshly made, I think this is from yesterday, to the, um, uh, this, this, this image of MVS Community Edition. And we're gonna untar it, um, install it, IPL it, and play with it and see why I like this uh, MVS Community Edition so much and why I think this is probably the new uh, reference um, MBS 3.8 uh, that uh, I would recommend people to start working on if they want to start working with MBS. So let's uh, get this going. Um, there is, um, let me see here, yeah, on uh, on this repository in GitHub, Sysgen, he has the release, they have the releases here, and the latest one from today or yesterday is version 2.0.2. .2. And here, there is a, uh, a a tar file, and what we can do is uh, we can take the link address, copy link address, and now let me switch to my terminal, um, and let's do something good with this. Um, so um, let me go to temp, 
and uh, and let me do this. Okay, it's downloading. Let's see how big it is. It's about 180 megabytes, which makes sense because there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, so now we can just untar this. XVF MBS. Okay, and so now we have this inside this directory, all capital, and um, we can go into conf. Make this a little bit bigger. We can go into conf. Um, and uh, local and this will be the Hercules configuration um, and so I want to put this on uh, yeah no that's fine actually I think uh, yeah I think that's fine um, let me think here for a second yeah, we can leave it like this. As you can see, it's pre-configured for two CPUs, which is, from my experience, always nice. Uh, Rec, uh, Rex MSGP on. And uh, as you can see, the usual DASTY file, which we just downloaded. So that all looks good. And now, as usual, so one thing to understand is this does not come with its own Hercules. So you need your own Hercules um, uh, pre-installed. So what I would do here is now um, why don't I go to two terminals so we can see better? Okay, so this is what you get, MBS Community Edition. Welcome to MBS Community Edition based on the J Mosley Sysgen, exactly what we just saw before on the browser. Uh, the standard user is IBM user, and I believe the password is Sys1. Yeah, perfect. So now we already see this is not our typical MBS TK4 from Jurgen Winkelmann, because uh, this says run rx mvp list to see all list to see a list of all installable packages so there is a package manager here for all the additional software we may want to install and um, so um, and rx points to the fact that we have ispf installed so we can very easily very sorry that we have brex installed ispf and we get this beautiful screen uh, which reminds us a lot of modern zos but this is uh, still mbs 3.8 uh, the ISPF that you see here is not the IBM proprietary ISPF. This is a clone uh, done painstakingly over 10 years by Wally here, who has recreated the whole the whole ISPF development environment, which is not just the editor. In fact, we don't even have the ISPF editor. Uh, we have, I think, a better editor. But it's the it's the environment where you can create those panels in Silist, in the uh, scripting language of TSO and has environment variables and 
uh, and many facilities to create tables, etc. And so all this had to be recreated because uh, we don't have it. Uh, IBM does not release it to the community and, and certainly not in open source. So uh, Wally went out and recreated that. So if you want to see if we have Rex installed, Brex, you can see here we have Brex version 2.5.2. And uh, and any and to execute Rex command, you always have to put an Rx for Rex at the beginning of every command. So that's why it says run R Rx MVP for MVS package manager list. And now will show us all the packages that we can install currently. Um, this map, for instance, that's interesting. Um, uh, many more. Uh, RPF we can install which is the raw prints um, interactive environment so let's go and install something called RX MVP install this map let's see what happens uh, if you see here it's actually now executing some scripts on the underlying Mac OS to go get those packages and install them um, so well, disk map is probably oh, MVP install disk map, and if you uh, let's see what happens here. Yeah, so it went and got the package and did a full MVS install. So it's really quite amazing. And um, well, I think we have to call it from ISPF. Let's go here more for here, and we should have a disk map now. Um, is it U? No. Is it uh, A? No. Uh, I think it's D. Yeah, something like that. So you can see all the DASDs, all the disks we have, and how they defined, and etc., etc., the device address. Very nice. And so that's how easy it is to install software. If you want to install FTP, uh, the FTP server, we do RX MVP install. FTPD, which I think generates a small error. No. Okay, so that went fine. Um, no, it did generate a, a very small errors, but it does run. Uh, FTPD has already started, and you could now connect with any FTP client. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, so, Klingon, there's some games we could install uh, so vtalk let's do it's probably already installed rx uh, mvp install uh, vtalk i would think that's probably already installed yeah it's already installed so now let's look a little bit um what we find here so we have the editor of obviously is rev edit which is uh, the Greg Price editor, which I think personally is a better editor than the ISPF that we had 43 years ago on uh, top of uh, TSO. Uh, we have some batch utilities to compile. Um, with, this is obviously the same screen that you would get from the Rob Prince uh, ed edition that I just mentioned earlier. And then you have some fun stuff such as uh, World Watch, which gives you, which gives you a zone, um, a solar, what is it called, a time zone viewer. Um, some games which we don't have installed, but we could easily install, and many other improvements compared to the TK4 update eight from six or seven years ago. So I think since this is also sysgent without any errors, so this, this went through an, uh, a faultless sysgen. Of MVS and uh, having that is really uh, quite important. I, I want to mention now at this point something, which is that um, having, uh, if you really want to have a very good understanding of uh, of um, MVS, I think it's important to at least once or twice, even just try, even if you don't complete, go through the sysgen because it gives you. An understanding and appreciation of everything that that goes into sysgening. So this is all driven by macros that you define 
and configure and then the assembler will basically build a custom made MVS for you. So it's really important to um, at least once or if you're serious about mainframes to go through and f serious about MVS to go through this whole procedure and then even more you will appreciate the fact that uh, that in here we have everything just cisgen for us without any error messages without any warnings this went through cleanly it's a clean cisgen and uh, it's really quite something to be able to have your own cisgen uh, system and this is kind of uh, with raw prints you get already a gent version which ev with everything installed this is kind of a hybrid it is just freshly cisgen and if you follow the procedure uh, you can also um, run the scripted version of the sysgen, which it tells you about here. Uh, it tells you build and install Hercules, which we already discussed here, and then sysgen. So you can actually run the sysgen it yourself if that's what you want with all the variables. You can define your username, etc. Uh, if you want recf protection, no recf, and um, and this will also work. the The problem with that is that uh, Hercules has a bug somewhere which uh, one other prominent uh, uh, community member, Mr. Uh, uh, Bill Lewis, has been trying to find for uh, quite a while yet. And so sometimes it does complete, sometimes it doesn't. There's a spurious error, error somewhere there in Hercules, which a bug which we have not uh, completely eliminated yet. So you may be able to run the scripted version and you will have an appreciation of how complex a procedure that is. This will run on a machine for a good 20 to 30 minutes depending on the speed of your machine uh, or it can be even longer uh, as it rebuilds MBS from scratch from source uh, because remember we have MBS in source code and of course it needs to also generate uh, JS2 and configure everything so you can do this process if you want or you can just uh, go to the description below the, uh, this video which points to the uh, release of the tarball you get the tarball and do exactly what i need start it up and you will have the latest uh version so as you can see this is from 16 hours ago i'm sure that maybe by tomorrow or in two three days there's going to be an even slightly newer version and so this way you always get the latest and best um and at some point i think it makes no sense to continue to always have the best and latest because in my particular case i have a lot of uh jobs and software and uh, source code that I wrote myself on my MVS and I can't keep losing it. So obviously the proper way to do it would be to maybe attach an additional DASD and I have a video about it on this channel and maybe I'll link to it in the description below this video where you define an additional DASD, you put all your stuff in that DASD and if you change everything here, uh, if you go to the next, uh, the next newest version all you have to do is uh, copy your DASD over, attach it, and then off you go. So that will be kind of a, um, that will be an in-between solution, a good, uh, a good uh, way to get around this problem. But I, you know, I'm still on Hercules TK4 Update 8 personally, uh, because I have so much stuff in there, and I don't want to lose anything. But I'm kind of seriously thinking right now to switch to MBS Community Edition because, uh, in my humble opinion, this is right now the best and greatest way to run mvs 3.8 on top of hercules it's solid it works everything is checked uh, there is an automatic build process on top of github and uh, there are very serious people behind this um, and also it always gets the latest uh, version of all the additional software such as rex such as uh, uh, network job entry etc etc and of, of course also greg price the the author of the editor uh, keeps making uh, improvements and fixes uh, to that and so um, it, I think it's really a painless and very simple and very fast way to move from something that's six or seven years old to something newer up to you but I really kind of like what's going on here anyway thank you for watching and uh, have a great time um, all the links that I mentioned are in the description below this video if you have any questions drop me a text uh, below this video in the comment section and if you have not subscribed yet now would be a great time to subscribe and please do not forget to press on the like button um, so that google makes it easier to find my video goodbye